I warmly welcome you to a series of uh, webinars focusing on advanced audit and assurance paper. So basically, uh, before I start, all of you know that as we speak, today, 26 April, as we speak, the fear about corona continues across the world and the curfew continues to be enforced, uh, even especially weekend during the entire country. Uh, across the entire country, but uh, CA Sri Lanka has taken various measures to ensure that you continue to prepare for the exam. Because end of the day, what really matters is, you know, while there are a lot of problems, right, people face, for you as a student, it's very important that you can make the best use of time. So you don't need to really worry that you can't attend your regular lectures, because I am telling you with confidence, if you carefully follow all this webinar series, you will be prepared, right? It, it will be a very good guide for you to successfully complete your examination. So before I start, uh, okay, those who don't know about me, uh, I am Surang Indunil. Uh, I have been lecturing for about more than 15 years. So advanced audit and assurance is one of the core subject uh, that I have been lecturing over the years. And I'm sure I can do a great justice for you in terms of preparing for you for the exam. So especially one word about this particular webinar series is this is highly exam focused. So today, so I'll be doing series of sessions. So about 50% of the paper, maybe you will get about uh, three, four sessions. Uh, and then uh, that will uh, have a greater coverage on the syllabus. So, uh, before, before we start, uh, let's look at, I'd like to ask this question from you that as a student, I'm sure by now for the exam, you would have studied this subject to a great extent. And you would have heard from your colleagues that, you know, this is an easy subject or difficult subject. I'm sure many of you will tell that this is one of the difficult subjects. So let me to uh, tell you that if you look at the history, I'll take one minute to tell you how advanced audit and assurance has evolved, especially uh, your current syllabus uh, 2020, right, there is a subject called advanced audit and assurance, right. Uh, but if you really look at prior to this, that is uh, 2015 to 2020, there was a subject called KC4, corporate governance, assurance and ethics. And prior to this, which is, uh, you know, even the time that we studied for many years, there was a paper called Advanced Audit and Assurance, which is a very tough paper, right? To be honest, you know, if you ask me that the current Advanced Audit and Assurance, right? So although it's, it, it says advanced, I am saying that, you know, this is end of the day, this is auditing, that when you become a chartered accountant, you may not necessarily be a practicing member. Therefore, this paper is not purely technical auditing paper, right? It has a lot of areas of technical knowledge, but it is not, I would say, as tough as those days the auditing paper we had. So, therefore, uh, my answer to this question is auditing difficult. You know my humble answer? It is not a difficult subject, right? So, I am telling you with uh, confidence, right? Having been with students for 15 years and teaching this subject for many years and having associated with highly successful students, including prize winners, right? So, if you look at the art of learning this subject, you will see this is one of the most interesting subject and one of the subject that can make a difference in you when you become a chartered accountant because you have a solid understanding about corporate governance, internal controls and how to analyze financial statements in terms of misstatements, etc. So with that little introduction, right, before I straight away get into certain syllabus topic, I would like to show you how this paper is placed together with other syllabus topics. Now, what you see is the syllabus structure. I am sure all of you are familiar with this, uh, with this uh, syllabus structure. For example, there is a pillar called audit and assurance and you see the first paper, assurance process, right, uh, sorry, audit 
process and digitalization and then there is this subject that we are talking today advanced audit and assurance and you will wonder why there is no subject on the top right the reason is that not that that subject is forgotten right now if you look at at strategic level there is a paper called advanced business reporting so that paper has the auditing component right again that component has been designed in such a manner that any chartered accountant they will have the governance risk and auditing knowledge which is required for them to perform competently but this skill may be different from a practitioner you know one of the unique benefit of being a chartered accountant is that one day you can start your own practicing firm so that requires extensive knowledge about auditing and that is why there is another subject sometimes you may not be aware so that subject is called professional practice management so this is specially for those who want to start you know uh, to be a practitioner one day if they wish to be a practitioner they have to complete this paper so uh, let me start our discussion by showing you the syllabus structure in terms of weightage right now you can see various topics from governance to auditing right audit evidence and so on so i am not discussing now this in much detail but i would tell you this seminar series which you can see from maybe during next couple of days will cover about 50 percent of the syllabus and i'm also going to discuss right some of these topics in relation to the pilot paper certain questions in the pilot paper so after learning the knowledge after learning after having an understanding about knowledge components we will apply that knowledge by looking at the question in the pilot paper so so let me to uh, tell you the story of auditing right so when i say story of auditing before getting to the syllabus topic so i want you to look at the bigger picture of auditing right as you all know auditing standards are governed by auditing is governed by sri lanka auditing standards right so i want your attention completely on this uh, so i am throughout my session you will see many of such uh, conceptualization right i want to give this advice to you throughout this session right while you are listening it's very important if i ask this question do you want to pass the exam there is no doubt all of you want to pass the exam do you want to be a prize winner yeah some of you want to be such an exceptional student so i am talking to all of you right when you prepare if you want to get the best out of this webinar series and i gave you the confidence that this is right definitely going to be highly exam focused at the end you can evaluate that so what i am asking you if you want to pass the exam number one so imagine from examiner's perspective if examiner is setting the paper so imagine on the table of examiner what type of documents examiner may have to refer in preparing the paper so one essential document is the syllabus every question has to be aligned in some form to syllabus learning outcome right in addition examiner may refer to auditing standard because this is auditing right so one of the key thing if you are preparing for the exam is syllabus learning outcome so i will show some of this as we go through so today my first session is predominantly going to be one of the most important area of auditing that is audit planning right so my instruction to you while you watch this video take a blank piece of paper or a small booklet small book make some important notes and during my presentation you will see in my slide you will have a separate slide called concept learned so if you want to pass the exam number one you need to have the knowledge for example what is significant risk now there is exam question identify significant risk but you have no idea about what significant risk means so you need to have that knowledge and then you should be able to apply in that case study where can i find the significant risk that's application and eventually what matters is examiner your results depends on what you write in the answer so there is art of writing so many of the time through our experience we see especially if you ask from examiners comments for auditing right 
I mean, I, I didn't tell you how while I talked about history of auditing, auditing has been such a terrible, while I said it's one of the easiest subjects, such a terrible subject in terms of exam pass marks, sorry, exam results, you know, sometimes 20%, 15%, etc. But I am telling you, if you properly prepare, all of you can pass this paper. So these three are critical. Do you have the knowledge? Can you apply? Do you know the art of writing? So through this uh, webinar series, I will cover all three in relation to the topics that I am discussing with you. So getting back to, remember you have to have, if you do not have a book or paper with you, please go back. You can post the video, right? take a piece of paper and write down that I have learned this. And I am telling you that if you want to pass the exam, you make notes from this video, go back, take your study text. Remember, I forgot to mention one thing, the books on examiner's table, the syllabus, study text. So study text is one of the key source that examiner will refer because that is the document officially given to students. It is very important that you carefully go through the study text, right. So therefore, some of these uh, lecture material slides that you see today I will extract, I have extracted certain critical areas from the study text as well. So if you are ready, so let us start the bigger picture, the story of auditing. Right, so you can also make notes with me, right? So imagine there is no barrier. Don't think that you are not in a classroom. This is the best classroom because you are at home, at your freedom, you are studying, right? So you can stop the lecture at any time. That's the beauty of this learning environment. You know, can you do this at a lecture hall? So stop the class, I want to go out. No, now you can do anyway. You can learn in any way that you like, right? So. Therefore, I really recommend you take sheets and you do with me these things, right? Then it really internalizes learning. So now the story of auditing, right? So what I want to tell you on the top, right? The why an audit is done. So there are two important questions to answer. Why an audit is done? And unfortunately, I can't ask you a question and get online feedback now. Right, but if it is a typical classroom, I want you answer. So this is, if you look at in your syllabus, you can see now in the slide, there is syllabus, sorry, topic A to H. Topic A is governance. Right, now if you read the syllabus, the learning outcome for governance is to know, right, apply agency conflict, right, in identifying, in evaluating need for the audit. Right, I am sure some of you did not understand that. Go and read the syllabus under corporate governance. What are you supposed to learn? If you look at that chapter 1, it talks about some interesting wo word called agency conflict. Right, it is very simple. So, simplicity matters a lot when you study a difficult subject. So, simply agency conflict means if you look at a company, right, company is managed by, again I have a triangle here. Right? Let us say this triangle is management and then there is a board of directors which is a circle. The board will monitor management activities, right? but who will give funds, who will fund the company, right? who will provide the funds, the power base of the company, who will select directors, right? that is shareholders. Right? Now under agency conflict, if board of directors and management, if they are using shareholders funds, they have to report back to them through financial statements as to how, right, this is called accountability as to how they have utilized shareholder funds. Now what is the agency conflict? Now you would have seen even in Sri Lanka during, la, re, during the recent past lot of cases, I am sure all of you would have heard these names, right, Golden Key, Pramukha Bank, CIFL and very recently Perpetual Treasury to all of that. If you look at these companies, right, one of the question is that the board of directors, those who are running the company, there are indications, there had been indicators that they are misusing the funds of shareholders, right. So that is why and when for example now you can ask all these companies, right, why nobody knows sometimes until the company is crashing, collapsing, why? Because when the accounts, financial statements are given, you should be able to analyze whether this company is going to die or not. That is the concept of going concern in auditing, 
right? If Goin concern, if there is a doubt in Goin concern, that will be reported in auditor's report. But my question to you, financial statements cannot be trusted if you have a doubt about the directors and management, right? If they are not honoring that accountability, stewardship, right, fiduciary duty, you cannot trust financial statement. Therefore, shareholder call for a friend, please help, friend and expert and that expert is the auditor. So now, you are also learning now a big point in your syllabus, right? Why there is the need for audit? The need is the agency conflict, right? Now I am slow because I am explaining to you a very important point. Agency conflict is what? Agent. Who are the agent? The board and management who are the agent of shareholder because shareholder is the principal, right? Now principal. The agent is supposed to best, agent is supposed to make the better use of resources and give maximum benefit to principal. But the issue is this agent is misusing, right? Maybe manipulating accounts. So therefore, auditor will come and evaluate these financial statements and give an opinion to shareholders, right? Whether the numbers are right, right? So that is the audit opinion. So now let me to summarize the point that you learned. It is additional point which I didn't plan but now you learn. Agency conflict is where agent which is board and management they are going to misuse shareholders funds and probably right misstates financial statements. So therefore there is agency conflict right to address agency conflict. There is an auditor giving an audit opinion, but you can also see another problem because the board can influence auditors. They can say we are changing the auditor. That is why under corporate governance, we ensure independence of auditor by appointing another independent committee, which is audit committee. An auditor can always talk to audit committee in terms of any issues that affects their independence. Right? So, I will erase this because I, through this explanation, I want to get to one point. Right? The main purpose of auditing now you know is to provide a report. I will put that as the second point here, right? Provide a report to shareholders, members, but this report can go to anyone else if it is a listed company. But number one is to establish an opinion stating that financial statements are free of material misstatements, free of MM. Now, I put it in short words, MM means material misstatements, right? Another, uh, there are several other phrases that you can use, true and fair view, right? Another one would be present fairly, all of that, present fairly. So, this is the challenge of auditor. So, I write it prominently here, right? So one of the main purpose of auditing is to ensure financial statements are free of material misstatements and to give a report, right? Then, I will ask you what is the fundamental requirements? If you read the title of audit report, that is mentioned as independent, auditor's report, independent. Right? So, I am having, so I will put E here, so that you can guess what is this prerequisite. Prerequisite means it is a must to have, right? Now, if you want to give an independent opinion, you cannot do that with E. So, imagine you are an audit partner of a audit firm and you have been asked to audit the company, right? You have been asked to audit the company. Uh, which is run or the CEO is your uh, say brother-in-law. So, brother-in-law is an entrepreneur, right? But if you happen to audit brother-in-law's company and give a bad audit report, he is in trouble. So, after that there are a lot of family issues. So, can you give an opinion if you are biased, if you have say you are an audit partner, you have significant millions of money you have invested in shares. Right? Your spouse is working in the company. So, in that context, you cannot give this opinion. Therefore, fundamental requirements to do an audit is to ensure ethical requirements are met. 
So if I write all of you may be familiar and this is another important syllabus topic when you look at the syllabus number one, right? So there are several ethical principles. So if I just recall, so integrity, being honest and straightforward, objectivity, being unbiased in making professional decisions, right? And to have professional competence, the knowledge and skill, up to date skill and to ensure standards are followed. Right, I mentioned two things here, right, to have the knowledge and skills and standards are followed which is due care, professional competence and due care, professional behavior, right, confidentiality, all of these are there, but I will write one thing in red color, right, that is the most important principle, important, now while these are ethical principles applicable to all chartered accountants, if you are an auditor, one of the toughest principle would be to maintain your independence, right. So independence has two facets, you have to be actually independent and you have to appear as independent, for example, you have no connection, but you know what happens if audit partner is frequently meeting manager and direct at a restaurant, others will see he is biased. So that is appearance. So I am not doing ethics session here, but remember without this you cannot give an opinion. So what is the next requirement if you go to another level to give an opinion uh, to achieve this end objective, right? So the next big task is to make sure what? So like I said, I can't ask you questions. So another big task, you would have seen huge two books. I'm sure, I mean earlier syllabus, advanced auditing, it was open book. So students used to uh, take those uh, books to the exam. So unfortunately, in your case, it is challenging. These key concepts you have to remember logically, right? So uh, the next big thing if you want to give an opinion, remember somebody says giving an opinion is a tough job. If you are running audit firm, can you do an audit within 5 days and give the report? Very difficult. Why? Because there is one person who says, right, you have to comply. So I am writing that. So like I said, you can write with me. Right? These notes are very powerful summarized notes. Comply with what? I will write all. So there are 30 odds, but sometimes some may be not relevant, therefore all relevant. What? Guess auditing standards. Without auditing standards, without all auditing standards, right? All relevant, you cannot give this opinion, right? When we say that there are series of auditing standards and today you will have a fair knowledge about them, right? But I tell, I told you somebody says you have to comply with somebody. Who is that somebody? That somebody, remember what we are learning here is, I would say, mother auditing standard, right? If I write the name of the standard, don't ask me why it is not father, why it is mother standard, right? Because it is such an important all encompassing auditing standard. So auditing standard 200 is the main standard that connects to all other standards that covers fundamentals of auditing, right? So if you read the name of uh, 200 standard, right, you can look at from your book, the name is objective of an independent audit. Now this is the objective. Ensure financial statements are free of material misstatement, right, and to give an opinion. So again, going to the name of the standard, objective of an independent audit and the need to conduct audit in accordance with all auditing standard. You know this standard has become very tough for practitioner. If you are audit partner, this standard says practitioner has to read all the auditing, read the full text of the auditing standard. You know some auditing standard goes to about 30, 40, 50 pages. Now okay, comply with all auditing standard. So what is the next bigger chunk? So I can. I can, I will keep one part blank and write big thing here. So this is the main thing if you want to give an opinion. If you have been asked to give an opinion about somebody, right, say one of your friend is he good, can you just tell something? No, 
if it is to be an opinion it has to be supported supported by what so this is one of the extremely important concept in auditing right you cannot give an opinion without evidence and we always use these two before the audit evidence right what evidence sufficient and appropriate audit evidence right now how do we know auditor will gather sufficient appropriate audit evidence when you comply with auditing standards automatically right you are compelled to gather sufficient appropriate evidence again do not write anything without a meaning right sufficient means enough audit evidence quantity right appropriate means quality right now for example appropriate audit evidence relates to two things audit evidence should be relevant and reliable relevant to what audit evidence should be relevant to what i am sure you cannot answer that question properly right i am challenging you relevant to what should we get the audit evidence relating to what you might say account balances the correct answer is assertion right one of the co key concept we will learn in a little while so relevant and reliable so all of this is about audit evidence right now we gather when audit partners if if somebody asks what date audit partner should sign the report the date right on which partner is satisfied that enough audit evidence sufficient right right audit evidence quality has been gathered regarding all the account balances when i say all the account balances don't forget the concept of auditing called material right all material area should be covered so now if i extend this this is not easy task remember in auditing right the information gathered by the auditor is called evidence right now this information revolves around two things if somebody asks break auditing into two parts what is the logical answer break auditing into two parts now imagine you are you have been asked to audit a bank billions of transactions right how many branches how many you know number of assets the complex transaction like derivatives all of that how do you simply audit can you audit all the transaction no now if you read your study pack there is interesting topic called risk based auditing right now you look at the risk now if you want to audit now i mentioned to you some of the corporate collapses including sri lanka and globally say enron worldcom and so on in all these companies if you look at one of the reason for failure is that okay audit report given but the risk have not been properly identified so one part of audit evidence deals with identifying risk and this audit procedure is called risk assessment procedures so i am not writing full word here I hope you can follow risk assessment procedures, right? To know what are the risks, say after auditing a bank, the auditor has identified, see the single biggest asset in the balance sheet is loan and now there is a very complicated requirements which is the central bank also says the same thing that we have to test the loan for impairment, whether these loans can be recovered, a big topic, right? Now one of the risks is loan impairment. So you have identified a big risk. If this is your risk, the next part of auditing, audit procedure. Remember now I am talking about procedures in auditing. There are no three procedures, broader procedures. There are two. One is to find where the risk is. The other one is called further audit procedure. So after finding the risk, what are we going to do? that part is called further audit procedure so don't forget this fundamental right any auditing standards that you take you have these headings what is the risk assessment procedures for example related party transaction you know related party means the parties which are connected may be a subsidiary associates joint venture and so on right if company wants to cook the books very easy now you get into a transaction with related party sell the asset at a higher profit right above the market value and record a profit right if such transaction is identified there is auditing standard called related to party and you will see what risk assessment procedure to identify risk after identifying what are you supposed to do because finally you have to detect do not forget eventually auditor has to detect misstatement then only you can report misstatement so this is a bigger part of auditing 
right? Because this diagram is very important. I am going to connect this to two things. One is to audit in standard in a little while. The other one is I am connecting this to your syllabus and today's topic. Then the last part. Now we have gathered audit evidence about now look at typical com, uh, company's balance sheet, any company's balance sheet PNL. We have covered revenue, cost of sale, expenses in the PNL, in the balance sheet, PPE and investments, the current assets, current liability, equity, all you have gathered audit evidence. You have identified risk audited. And now what can you do? So don't jump and say give opinion, no. There is another checkpoint in auditing, right? evaluate audit evidence, right? Evaluate. So, I will write this as evaluate evidence, right? And not only evidence and the effect, if you have identified misstatements, evaluate the effect of misstatements. There is a specific auditing standard so, I will write it here now itself that is 450 auditing standard evaluate the effect of material misstatement then only you can make a better decision whether you are going to change the audit opinion right. So, when it comes to reporting so I will take to this side so essentially if there is no so there are two types of audit report right there are two types of audit report. If financial statements give true and fair view that is unmodified unmodified opinion right but if there is a misstatement those are called modified opinion and uh, when we do the opinion discussion on audit reporting, we will learn. But if you are a good student who knows the subject very well, there are three types of modification, qualified opinion, adverse and disclaimer, right. In addition, as a part of reporting, right, in addition to modifications, auditor will also nowadays, there is a new very important standard that deals with key audit matter CAM, right. And sometimes without even giving a CAM auditor want to draw attention. So, these are called emphasis of matter and other matters, right. And if you look at this particular area and uh, when you, you can uh, see the slide, uh, there is uh, a separate topic called audit evidence, evaluating evidence and reporting. That is what I exactly wrote here, evaluating and reporting. And you can see the syllabus weightage given to those two. Uh, that is evaluating audit reporting 15 percent, right, and reporting, right, evaluating and reporting. Now, I told you I am connecting this topic to syllabus, right. So, this is 15 percent of your syllabus when you talk about evaluation, reporting, you know, CAM key audit matters. I will also write. Uh, See, for example, key audit matter is auditing standard number 701, emphasis of matter is 705. Other matter is uh, 70, sorry, emphasis of matter and other matter is 706, then modified opinion is 705, then unmodified opinion or auditor's normal report is auditing standard number 700. So, the 700 series is about uh, reporting. And if you, uh, when you look at your pilot paper, you will see there is a question on audit reporting. So, these are definitely this is going to come. As I told you in this webinar series, I am going to be very exam oriented, right, preparing you for the exam. The topic that is going to definitely come because they are big topic in the syllabus. So, audit reporting is one such big topic, right. Then, when you look at this diagram, if you ask me what is the diagram that I am trying to conceptualize here, it is one standard that covers all the standards. What is that standard? 200 standard, right. But then I will also connect it to other areas. I already covered ethics, right. Now, let us look at this part of it, right. Now, if you look at this whole thing, right, identifying what to audit, right, that is your risk. Right. In auditing the process where you see where the risk is, that is auditing standard number 300, uh, sorry 315, the risk assessment standard 315 
and then for each risk for example if you have identified my example here loan impairment what work you are going to do if there are thousands of loan files are you going to read one by one or else you are going to do an analytical review to see what are the unusual loan right and to do certain testing what do you want to do right depends on one thing so that is why when we say in auditing depends right that is one of the common answers in auditing you ask from a partner is this material yeah it depends on various things now this depends 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 is a big concept in auditing so let me to put that also right to complete this diagram right i am drawing here there is right one thing which connects throughout the process of auditing uh, that is called professional judgment professional judgment and today after listening to this webinar so you go to your book and quickly read now this this is a big auditing standard right this is very uh, the bigger picture of the standard at a glance so professional judgment need to be made so i was here explaining to you the risk and further audit procedures right now when it comes to that there is a auditing standard called identifying risk and there is auditing standard of procedures that need to be done that's called auditors response 330 standard as you know auditors first response is to test the control and then substantive procedures i'll cover this in detail in my session today right now these two taken together is called audit plan right so audit plan so audit plan is another standard which is auditing standard number 300 so audit plan has two component one is to identify risk for the procedures and remember practically any plan to be successful has to be supported by a strategy so then there is another concept called overall audit strategy right now if you have studied by now these words you should be familiar with these words but if you seen these if you looks like these are magical words never heard high flying words so it's difficult to pass the exam if examiner gives you a question right explain the difference between overall audit strategy and plan how can you answer if you don't know the bigger picture so i will explain to you in a little while so overall audit strategy and the plan together is called audit planning so these two are covered in audit instance number 300 right the same thing here 300 standard now you can see all this 300 series of standards deals with planning and then i emphasize here the word m so even opinion is qualified when there is a misstatement if it is material only it is going to be qualified it has to be material but not pervasive so again when we discuss opinion we will discuss what is meant by materiality probably i can cover materiality today uh, and then in audit reporting you should learn what is meant by pervasive right pervasive means your problem is they are in many account balances right it's a massive problem but technically we will clarify what that is right but what i want to say materiality is another important auditing standard which is auditing standard number 320 now you see how many standards 300 series we looked at 700 series we looked at the balance element is all about audit evidence for example when it comes to evidence we should know the foundation standards for all evidence right that is auditing standard number 500 that is the foundation standard right the 500 standards covers the sufficient appropriate evidence and then use of expert all of that is covered management expert in 500 standard so in addition all other standards right in 500 series for example if you want to talk about stock count so there is a standard called special item right in auditing standard number 501 if you want to talk about how to get confirmation on external confirmation like debtors confirmation there is auditing standard right that is 500 and uh, five standard right but today's context and especially more than today's context in risk based auditing the item with biggest risk the highest audit risk are the complex items which we call estimates right and fair values for example you happen now i took the example of impairment impairment is it a fixed number 
No, what is the amount of loan which is not going to be recovered? It is an estimate, right? And then there are fair valuation, right? So, now what is fair valuation? We have to value the building, for example, see World Trade Center. We need to value World Trade Center. So, I think in my slide it will cover. Now, World Trade Center, you know, the tallest building, it is a company, overseas reality company. They have to value World Trade Center, fair value. Right, so how do you determine fair value? It requires a lot of judgment. Management can change one percentage, discounting rate by one percentage and change the answer by millions. So that is why these are sensitive, tough topic in auditing. What I want to say to cover such topic, there is a separate auditing standard called 540. Uh, uh, auditing standard number 540, right. Likewise, I am not going to write all the names of the standards here, right. I spoke about related party transactions which are high risk, right, 550 standards. So, likewise, there are all 500 series dealings with evidence. Now, I said this is the story of auditing and I also said that we can link this to two things. Uh, one is auditing standard. So, what are the standards cover? Before standards, what should come with principles, that is ethics. Then this diagram covers the 200 fundamental standards, 500 series, sorry, before 500 series, the planning part, having a strategy to do the audit. So, partner will tell, you know, this is my strategy in one page to do the bank audit, right. So, you audit these high risk balances, you follow a risk based approach, right, allocate a team with expertise, that is the kind of strategy we are talking. Right, and then there is a planning process. This is 300 series, right? Then I explain to you materiality. Then 500 series on evidence. Then there is a specific standard on 450 on evaluating Mr. Statement, and finally 700 series on reporting. So this is auditing standards at a glance. And now, if you look at syllabus, I already put 15 percent here. And uh, when you look at this syllabus weightage structure about evidence, 25 percent about the evidence, right. So, here 25 percent, right. So, you can see f uh, there itself 25 percent, 15, 40 and the planning part you can see planning and risk assessment another 15 percent, right. So, it is now 30, 55 and then if you look at other syllabus topics, for example, ethics and quality. 10 percent here, right. And uh, what are the balance topics in the syllabus? Again, there is a last topic called internal audit. It is a part of, you know, working with auditors to gather audit evidence. So, that, that 5 also we can add here, right. So, now this is your syllabus. And also, first governance part I quickly explained to you, but it is not only governance, internal controls, I am not underestimating those are very important topic. But in addition, what is not discussed out of this, there are two other things in this diagram, auditing in a digital environment. So, this is an interesting topic. Today's world, when you identify risk or audit, what matters, you are working in a digitalized environment. Even auditors should be mindful about artificial intelligence, IoT, Internet of Things, AI, data analytics, big data all of that, right. How it is going to affect auditing, you have to have some understanding for RPA, robotic process automation. It is a very important area, there must be question in the exam in such uh, new topics, right. So, that is connecting to that and uh, last there is another one F, F is about, now this is all about auditing. In addition to auditing, you have to have a understanding about assurance framework, that is another interesting uh, topic that we can discuss separately 10 percent. With this is my bigger introduction to you and the story of auditing, right. This may not be a story, but this is the bigger picture of auditing. And now, we are in a better position to go one by one into this. And in my session, I will be doing, uh, you know, f first focus is to discuss and ensure that you understand the knowledge component and then we have case studies. Right, so let me to uh, get to the first thing that we are going to discuss, uh, the process of auditing, right. So, I am sure as the instruction, so I will erase this. 
the instruction that I have given to you, I am sure you have mapped this and now onwards every topic that I am discussing they are connecting to exam question, think in that way, right? They are connecting to exam question, that is the very reason after doing these topics I want to discuss with you two big case studies from the pilot paper, right, in relation to audit planning and audit evidence. So, you can write, take your blank piece of paper and write uh, this topic, uh, the process of auditing and especially at the end of this explanation, you are going to learn uh, the process of auditing, but your essential subtopic is audit risk. And when you as a student learn in audit planning, right, if you do not know audit risk model, you are not going to have a good understanding. Again, like I told you, so when you when it comes to study, do not make your study boring, having to read a book of you know 500 pages, reading para by para, trying to memorize things, find interactive ways, sorry not interactive, interesting ways to learn. One such method is having a very clear understanding about the topic, try to paint a picture of it, imagine, visualize and then it is very easy to remember. Now, I am going to teach, explain to you auditing. So, my first question is what are we auditing? So, I write here, this is going to be very important diagram, understand conceptualization, each of these concept. So, if I am auditing, what I am going to audit? It is, I write here the short form, right, in short form, FS means financial statements. So, there are three important things in financial statements, so I specifically three things. So, what are those three? Account balances, right? For example, in the balance sheet you have all the key balances and then you have transactions. So, we use the better word uh, classes of transactions TA and then presentation and disclosure. So, I put here presentation and disclosure, this is what is there in set of accounts where audit is going to give opinion, right, financial statements. But our topic as you know from my initial explanation, right, this audit is interested about one thing in giving the opinion. Now, I am asking what is that one thing on the top of the previous diagram that audit is interested in giving to ensure financial statements are free of risk of material misstatement. So, what is our big topic then? Risk of material misstatement. So, now my next question to you how do you measure a risk of material misstatement? Is there a framework? And that is the most powerful thing in auditing. Now, for you to know stock of a company, right? There is a manufacturing company, stock is overstated. It is misstated, right? Now, what is your framework to know overstated, understated, or not disclose? Your framework is pack cover. You will wonder what this is right? You will wonder what this is, what pack cover means. I told you, if somebody asks what are you going to audit, what are you going to gather audit evidence? I said audit evidence has to be relevant, relevant to the account balance, particular assertion, I am auditing stock, I want to ensure stock is valued properly. Now, stock valuation is an assertion. Again, whether it is misstated or not, if you want to cross check, remember in auditing standard, misstatement is defined as the difference between how company has recorded stock, that is 500,000, how company has recorded and the measurement, how company has reported and the reporting or the measurement required by what? There is a guideline to prepare accounts, that is SLFRS. 
and the measurement required by SLFRS. So, what is the principle in SLF SLFRS? Stock has to be valued at cost or NRV whichever is lower. Now, you have manufacturing company let us say this uh, company is producing food item which are not essential and today's context with the whole crisis you know only essential items are moving and all the stocks right you can imagine this may be certain confectionery like chocolates and other sweets items right uh, you know fairly a larger company there is a stock value now it is overstated why because these stocks are expired you have to write write off so valuation so valuation connect to account balance right now using pack cover you are able to identify any issue right in financial statement let me to put few more example so that you identify pack cover right i want to ensure there is a company right again i am relating this to today's situation most companies are under pressure because they can't achieve their sales targets now, therefore, you know, for whatever reason, managing director, CEO wants, you know, we are a listed company, you know, we have given this number, somehow we want to hit the number. So, can't we bring forward some of the sales, you know, even before dispatching to customer, this is an order, we have entered into the order. So, there is a confirmation of order, but goods have not been delivered. Let us say this is a shipment that has to go, goods have been manufactured and kept. Can they invoice? manufactured but not delivered let us say not delivered order was confirmed manufacturing was done by say 25th of March right and this was specifically manufactured to this company in let us say China let us say in, uh, you can take any country that you want say example right 25th it is manufactured but not delivered. Now, imagine if this sale which is 20 million is in the accounts. Now, how are you going to say whether this is a misstatement or not? We are looking at transaction that is sale, there is assertion call occurrence. Now, if you check the meaning and now I want you to write valuation means whether balance, balance is properly valued, especially I am talking about transaction and balances, right. Then what is occurrence? occurrence means recorded transaction. So, I emphasize it, I write it here, recorded transaction has occurred. No, no, recorded, 20 million is recorded, but can we say it has occurred? No, it has not occurred, why? Now, again, what is the point that you, you can conclude the transaction occurred? It is not your conclusion, there is SLFRS, Right, you know this five step process of revenue recognition under new standards SLFRS, right. You can only record the revenue when the control has passed at a point or over a period. Usually in many cases if this is a case of delivering to another country, if the shipment terms is let us say FOB, when the goods are on the board, right, say at the vessel at that point based on the bill of lading document only you can record the sale which means it has not occurred accounts are misstated so you have recorded a sale right which has not occurred it also questions your data balance see what is existence assets and liabilities are actually in existence if I record this 20 million in my balance sheet, there is a data, but this data does not exist now. At the same time, I do not have a right to collect this data balance. That is how you have to evaluate assertion. And I mentioned to you, see, now whatever reason, actually this shipment has gone, they have got the government permission, because I am talking in the current crisis situation, you know, they have got the permission and somehow deliver this on the 15th of April. Right now, then only in 15th of April this can be accounted as sales, right? Which means your period is wrong, and that is called cutoff. Now you have learned uh, example of assertion. But let me to ask: if I ask you to define assertion, what is the answer? Very simple. Remember, if you look up the dictionary for assertion, you will see assert. Assert means declare something to be true. It may not be the truth. You know, my friend is a good friend assertion is good this company is good assertion someone has to go and validate and check whether it is right so when it comes to assertion in accounting from management point of view assertion means 
management representation about financial statements. When they say sale is 200 million, what is management representation? All this 200 million, all the transactions have occurred. They are accurate quantity into price minus discount. They have recorded in the correct period cutoff. They have classified properly, right? And so on, right? Uh, uh, the data balance exists like that management represent. So, those are the uh, that is the definition of assertion. Then before I move on further, please in your book the first main concept that you learn now assertion, please write it and follow this slide. So, I want to quickly cover the meaning of each of these assertion and how it connects to account balances, classes of transaction and disclosures. When you look at this slide, now we already discussed pack cover, right? Now, what are these example? Now, you will wonder because I did not cover all of this, right? Now, what, what, what for example, P means here, right? Presentation, right? Accuracy, classification, cutoff, completeness, occurrence, valuation, existence, right? And obligation. Now, that is the meaning. Assertions I explained to you, representation by management, which are explicit. Sometimes explicit means they write saying that this is correct, explicit. Sometimes you do not need to say it is embodied it is embedded. Now, you do not need to say you are reporting a sale which has uh, occurred, no, it is embedded, right. Then, but auditor is using this, right. Uh, management used to present financial statements based on the reporting framework in Sri Lanka SLFRS and in applying accounting standards, right. And auditor is using to identify missed statements. Now, this is the in auditing standard number 350. Now, this is an important slide. Now, I take my example, when sales transaction occurs, that means when the goods are handed over, immediately in my balance sheet, there is a data in existence, occurrence and balance sheet existence and I have right to collect the balance, right. And then at the same time, if I know sales take place at the correct period that is cut off and if I know the it is accurately captured here. Now, one of the tough assertion to audit is completeness. Now, what is completeness, right? Now, can you, if I, if somebody tell there is a company, they have reported only, uh, they have 1000 invoices recorded. Somebody is saying completeness is, you know, now there are 1000 transactions, check the invoices for all 1000. That is not completeness. Remember, this is very easy to say recorded transaction they occurred, right? But that is like occurrence. But our question here completeness. Completeness means one can say this is not 1000, this company has 1200 transaction, which means all transaction that should be recorded have actually been recorded. Right now, how do we know sales that should be recorded, which means delivered but not recorded. So, you have to carefully design what are the audit procedures required for completeness, right. In audit evidence, those sessions can be discussed in detail. Now, uh, my I draw your main attention to transaction and balances in the exam, that is very important. There should be another column saying presentation and disclosure. For example, you will disclose on the occurred transaction, disclose is complete, accurate. Most of these assertions may be applicable to uh, presentation which you can go through. So, now I have covered one part of the explanation to learn assertion, right. But my uh, explain main topic is not this. As I explained to you, my main topic is audit risk model. So, to explain audit risk model, I took financial statements and now the first thing that I want to explain to you is risk of material misstatement, right. There are there are two components of risk of material misstatements. Let me to take this out, right? And also, okay, I'll do that. I'll we'll draw a circle and explain to you later what it is, right? Before that, there are two parts of risk of misstatement. So this is one which we call inherent risk. Please make a record. Inherent risk. Inherent risk. And uh, if I ask you what inherent risk means, example, right? Uh, you should be able to give me. But before that, logically, what inherent risk means? I mean, good to uh, put into context, right? Today, everybody is worried. You are not going out. Be uh, stay at home, right? Stay safe. Why? 
Now, if I ask you what is the chance of uh, corona getting infected, right? What is the inherent chance? Inherent risk means forget any controls mechanism like wearing a face mask or anything as you walk out, is there a chance of getting that infected? So, that is something like inherent risk, right? Without looking anything, what is the natural possibility of being exposed? So, that is inherent risk. So, if you look at in the context of auditing, inherent risk definition, right? Now, you will see definition in few minutes in the slide, but before it comes, if I just explain to you, inherent risk means the possibility, there is another word in auditing standard called susceptibility, possibility that an assertion can be misstated without considering controls, right. Let us, I will put this definition. Now, you follow this definition. Now, uh, there is no point of reading books if without understanding properly, right. Now, see, I have highlighted some keyword susceptibility is possibility that an assertion, any student who read this book without assertion, you know, that has no meaning, proper meaning for them because you have to learn assertion that we did now, then you can interpret this. Possibility that an assertion is misstated, right? Possibility to a misstatement without considering controls. In my example, without taking any precaution as you walk out, what are the chances of getting infected in a different example, right? Likewise, in a company, in the balance sheet, some assets are inherently right, riskier to a misstatement than other asset. For example, if I tell you in the same manufacturing company, cash inherent risk may be low, right, because cash is cash when it comes to say for example, like valuation, you know, cash balance is cash. But if you take my example I spoke about, you have to value a building, fair valuation, right, where you know the chances of that being wrong is very high because it is an estimate, you cannot get exact value. Therefore, when it comes to inherent risk, right, what are the example of uh, what type of uh, uh, assets, right, may be subject to higher inherent risk, complex items like impairment, you know, fair valuation. Now, actually those complex areas, generally we can say complex, but more specific example is estimates, right, accounting estimates like impairment and many fair value transactions. So, these are in the balance sheet. If you see these items, you have to audit the inherent risk is very high, right. Now, if in my example, I talk about a manufacturing company and initially I explained to you. Uh, there is a company producing certain uh, say dairy products, dairy products of course essential say items like chocolates and other stuff, manufacturing company, food item those are uh, certain items, it is not essential food let us say, there is a stock valuation, right. Now, we can see in that company the stock valuation, you have to go the product expire and let us say this company is also doing pharmaceutical items, right, certain uh, perfumes and pharmaceutical perfumes, all of those different categories. But if you look at the stock, whether stock, now if you apply Costo NRV test, we have to test and see, for example, cost is each item say 500 rupees. But now, the product quality has come down at the balance sheet date, after the balance sheet date, you cannot sell this, you are selling at 200, which means stock is overstated at the balance sheet date, right. Now, if there is a chance of inherent risk, I also write here another thing because most inherent risk comes from business risk, right. I will explain to you this later, right. So, now my example of NRV estimation, now we have to make some estimates about NRV, right. For that first of all, you have to identify non-moving items. If company has inherent risk, how company is protecting against this risk is I am putting a circle around this and what is this circle? This circle is whenever there is a risk, company has control to ensure that they will make sure financial statements are not misstated. Now, in the company that I mentioned, there are so many stock items we do not know which is, which is expired at the balance sheet date, they have a control. What is the control? Right. Specifically, I, I will uh, I will write few example of control in a different color. Right. Now, this example of control. 
right uh, is performance review. Right. So, these are example of control. Okay, let me put the example first segregation of duties, right. Then there are physical controls. So, these are control activities, physical controls, right. And uh, so we can also write information processing. So, likewise, these are various examples. Now, performance review, you are looking at business performance review, review of a report. Now, in this company where there is a chance of stocks, no, non moving stocks, now we know finance manager get an age report, right, and review the age report to see whether there are non moving items and then write off them, make it zero and adjust the stock. If this control is there, auditor is happy because the risk is minimized, right. So, therefore, remember when there is an inherent risk company has control, but there is no assurance that this control will always work. So, I break the circle and take out another risk, that risk is called control risk, right. So, when it comes to control risk, when there is an inherent risk like stocks are not moving, there has to be a management control, but the control risk is where control fails to detect, right, either detect, correct this misstatement statement or prevent. Now, read the definition of control risk. Now, if you go back to the slide, control risk is a misstatement statement that could occur again the word assertion, right, not prevented, it is not prevented, detected or corrected. Now, these three are important word preventive, detective and corrective and later when we explain to you uh, the internal controls, we will discuss this concept in detail, but remember when it comes to control, three things can fail, at three stage it can fail. One is design, control is not designed properly. For example, you have a stock report, some stocks are not captured to the report, report itself is wrong, that is not designed properly. Then whether control is implemented, so there is a report, but finance manager is not reviewing that, so it is not implemented. Third one, right, it has to operate effectively, operating effectively, operating effectively throughout the period, operating effectively throughout the period, which means every month finance manager has to review this. But when you check, you will see some months it is not being done. So, remember control risk is where we, there is a control, but control fails. So, what I want to tell you now that you know risk of material misstatement has two parts, inherent risk and the control risk, right. Now, which means, now how do you audit? Now, in the audit risk model, there are three risks that we have to discuss, right. One is inherent risk, possibility that an assertion can be misstated without considering control. And then, when there is inherent risk, management will have control, but what is the possibility that the control fails based on these two? I will ask you one fundamental question, can auditor change the, change these two? Now, these two belongs to whom? Remember, these two belongs to management, the risk of misstatement belongs to management, the only variable, now even in your book, you, this has been put as a formula, right? But logically, this is an important framework to take. The only way, let us say, I take the same example, stock our inherent risk is high, control risk also high because finance manager is not reviewing, therefore, my overall risk of misstatement is high. So, what? The only way I can give a proper opinion, right, as the auditor, what is my risk? Now, you will wonder what is finally audit risk. No? Uh, if I am a partner sign in audit report, you can look at the book, the audit risk is defined, the risk that auditor gives an inappropriate opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. That means, stock is overstated, right, stock value is overstated, let us say overstated by uh, uh, 150 million, right, which is material right, later we will discuss why it is material, let us say this is 50 million is 20 percent of the profit, it is material, right. 
Now auditor has not detected this misses statement. Auditor says financial statements are free of misses statement. So that's the problem. So when there is a risk of misses statement, auditor should ensure auditor will somehow detect it. Detection. If auditor is not going to detect, that risk is called detection risk. In other words, if both are high, detection risk has to be low, has to be low, right? So, which means based on the inherent and control risk, auditor should decide what is the appropriate level of detection risk. Now, there I want to cover a very important concept in when auditor detects or takes into account detection risk, there are two aspects auditor looks at. One is detection risk, right. Now, auditor's detection risk depends on what? Now, before I explain to you, okay, what is detection risk? Before I explain to you how detection risk works, what is detection risk? Simply auditor's procedure fail to detect a misstatement. statement. Now we use the word auditor's procedures, right? Now what are the procedures used by auditor? Earlier I told you auditor is using risk assessment procedures to identify risk and then auditor is using further audit procedure. You can say RAP and FAP further audit procedures to respond to risk. Now, when auditor is responding to risk, auditor has two options. Option 1, always auditor will see, can I rely on how management detect misses statements rather than I detect because company CFO is there in every day in the company. I ask the auditor go only for, you know, within two months, how can I detect? Before I detect whether the stock is overstated, Audit is going to see whether company is detecting misstatement. statement that is called test of control. Now, in this case, if finance manager is reviewing every month the stock report and identify non-moving item, there is a control. Auditor will test the control and see every month some stocks have been identified as non-moving and adjusted. Auditor is happy. So, auditor tested the control, the chances inventory valuation is wrong is less. So, therefore, auditor will do very limited detail testing. So, that detail testing is what? Substantive procedure. So, detection risk is where auditor's test of control fails, which means auditor is thinking control is working, but actually it does not work. And auditor's substantive procedure means the procedure designed by auditor also fails. So, finally, it is not detected, right? So, therefore, this audit risk model is very important now. If you link back, I want to cover a few more concepts using this. Remember now, we are first part of my lecture is to give all the concepts, clarity in terms of knowledge, then we will have case studies, right. Now, in terms of this, if you connect this to auditing standard that we discuss, now the risk identification, inherent risk control, all of that is covered in auditing standard number 315. Then through this RAP and FAP risk assessment procedures to identify risk and further audit procedure which is covered in 330, right, auditor's response standard, right. Then, so th that is the connection to standard. So, one more thing I want to explain to you. Now, these risks are called assertion level risk. Now, I will write here these are assertion level risk. Now, let me to, I said I am going to draw a circle, I told you earlier and this is the circle. Now, what does it mean? There are some risks that can affect the financial statements, right, but you cannot identify them at assertion level. Very important one, please write, uh, make a note and you can actually in your note uh, draw uh, risk of material misstatements, these two, right inherent risk and control risk, right, means risk of material misses statement. You can identify at two level. One is overall financial statement risk. So, what is this circle? Overall financial statement risk. The other risk that you can identify at assertion level is called assertion level risk, right. Now, if I put some example for overall financial statement risk, then you will understand. Now, I am, you are auditing a company, right, where you have a big question mark about integrity, right, integrity, management integrity. Let me to use a different color so that you can see that 
separately integrity what integrity management honesty is questionable there are several legal cases for this company right selling inferior quality products right say few people have died after eating their food item so they are to their main interest is to make money sometimes they add in certain ingredients which are harmful to human beings so that's a dirty company so many top management level there are frauds they have not paid taxes uh, you are going to audit such a company now imagine if there is such a company you don't know which balance they will miss the state it may be inventory or pp or anything so therefore you cannot exactly identify which assertion may go wrong but management integrity right because of the same reason they do this also i write it here extremely important concept in auditing management override of controls so very important if you don't know put a strict mark later you have to i i think i can cover this probably today but simply what does it means there are our controls here but top management can always bypass take a different example if company wants to give credit there is a credit controller right before selling on credit term you have to evaluate the bank guarantee there are a lot of requirements but now managing director says you know give any credit to this person he is one of my friend you know whenever i need money he gives without any interest you know don't apply any of so management can easily bypass control this managing director is also transferring you know lot of companies items to his own company uh, run by his spouse when it comes to top management if they bypass that control you can't rely on this control right so that is another example of what management override of control which is example of overall financial statement risk we don't know which assertion is going to go wrong let me to put another example management competence now we are going to look at some case studies after this uh, then you will see example for all of this management competence so you are auditing a company accountant or finance director is not qualified and this company has financial instruments and investment property share based payment now if there is no qualified person there is a chance that disclosure may go wrong and certain account balances may be wrong but you don't know which one so therefore uh, those risk are called what overall financial statement risk so therefore when it comes to fap auditor's response audit has to respond to both assertion level risk this audit has to respond through what assertion level risk audit has to respond right audit through substantive further audit procedures right and overall financial statement risk also audit has to respond how we will discuss because if you are going to audit a dangerous company where management honesty is in question right there is a chance of fraud one of the best response from the partner is send my best team to do the audit and i want to supervise personally their work so those are the responses allocating team experienced team members and then doing unpredictable audit procedures so i highlight the word unpredictable audit testing and be very particular about accounting policy selection in certain judgmental areas i'll cover this separately to you but point is they are not assertion level i think through this example i have covered you know a bigger part of this but let me to again ask a question i put a circle here what what did i say that example of information processing physical control any control you can't talk control without segregation of duty then only control is properly uh, i mean it's very difficult to override if when there are segregation of duties performance review information processing is it related control say in your company in a bank the interest calculation is all system driven right through system certain control the invoice in even in a manufacturing company quantity price calculation everything is system driven right so these are control activities right but i want to finally right uh in this to conclude this analysis to uh, connect it to one more important point that is overall internal control framework right of a company so foundation 
for auditing is for auditor to learn not the particular control activity per se, but auditor should evaluate overall internal control framework. And as you know, it is a syllabus topic. Now, what is our main topic here? The process of preparing financial statement to ensure that financial statement nothing is misstated, company should have a good internal control system. And uh, this part of the diagram is the detection risk. Now, if I cover this area of the diagram, which is the company side like this, and uh, say that this is company's what? What environment? The company overall there should be a but internal control system. And in internal control system, the foundation, the bedrock for the internal control system is the attitude of board members, their awareness regarding how important controls, that is intangible. Do not look at any of these reports, if you have a doubt about director's attitude, if there are directors, they do not like auditors, you know, there is no point of considering control, they are from exam point of view and also practically, now if this whole area that I put uh, in black, this box is internal control system, I see internal control system. So, what is the foundation that is called control environment? So, do not uh, after this session, you go to your study text and learn what are the elements of control environment, right. So, control environment is all about uh, what, what uh, this topic captures, things like integrity of the board, right, how uh, the board exercise oversight, oversight means supervisory responsibilities over management, right. For example, in short, this is about corporate governance, this is about board of directors, right management philosophy, right, whether this is a high risk stake in company or not. I am not covering this control environment in detail, but make sure if company has a good board of directors and they are audit committee and they are much interested about the controls in that company, you will assess what risk is low. Overall financial statement may be low, right. So, therefore, if there is a problem in control environment where directors do not supervise management or integrity is in question over a high risk taker, right, in those companies overall risk is high. The control environment is very important, right. As the next element, if I am putting element here in this one, right, now see through this analysis, if I want to build the element of internal control systems, let us say this is first element. The second element is how management identify risk. Now, we spoke about risk here, right? This is inherent risk identification. Before audit identify this risk, who has to identify risk management? So, when you look at, uh, when you look at the internal control system, you have to look at management risk assessment process. Number two, and when there is a risk, exactly now we are getting this circle, what is this circle? That is the third one, there has to be control activities. And then, if I put in bottom area, right, now for, this is finally about information system, the accounts has to come through Excel or ERP or any accounting system. Therefore, in producing financial statements, I am writing, See, this is number one, control environment, identifying what are my risks. For example, one company CFO will see one of my big risks is investment property valuation. Say, in a bank is loan impairment, disclosures, right. Now, if you know, CA Sri Lanka very recently issued a guideline during the current crisis time, right, how financial statement should reflect some of the risk. If company has financial instrument, the institute has requested additional disclosures. Now, these are disclosure risk, even company should identify risk assessment, right, control active, control environment, risk assessment, then third one control activities. Fourth one, there should be a good information system in the company to produce financial statement, information system. If you follow with me to draw this or to write down these things, you will understand, identify information system. And finally, if I use this side to say, 
that for internal controls to be dynamic, right? Now, there is a good board of directors. They have identified risk and they have put controls together, but someone has to make sure that these controls are designed properly, implemented and working. And if there is a problem, they report back to them. And that part of internal control is called monitoring. Right? Now, these five are the elements of internal control. I am sure if you get MCQ in your paper, which one of the following is not an element of internal control system? Right? You will get this out of the answers. These are valid answers. Control environment, risk assessment, information system, control activities, information system and monitoring. So, let me to show through slides some of these things and then we will go to a case study to discuss uh, these concepts. So, theory wise, I am sure this diagram will give you a lot of items, especially the focus here is on uh, if I before. So, basically now we have actually now a discussion of if you if you look at what is the main topic we are discussing even in study pack I'm, I think it is chapter 4 or 5 about risk assessment. One of the key topic in audit planning. So, I am trying to get into audit planning, right. This is one of the fundamental area that we discuss, right. I will show you even by looking at this diagram, if you are with me, right, what are some of the key things that you learn? One is you learn financial statement assertions, right. And then you know risk of misstatements. The first part of the risk is inherent risk. That means, the possibility that any of this assertion can be misstated without considering controls. Then which of the item in the balance sheet has high inherent risk? One is complex items, estimates, fair value and I also said I will explain this through a case study, business risk. Now, in today's context with the current crisis, right? There is lot of business risk for some companies, even some companies they are going to close down. Business risk is called risk inherent in the business and some of these business risk will result in an audit risk. Now, for example, if I talk about the crisis time, because it is something common inherent in the business, that is going to affect the inventory valuation of a company. That is going to affect the going concern, things like that. So, we learn inherent risk and then what does this circle means? When there is an inherent risk, management ensure that there is a control and therefore, auditor may be happy to test that control, but there is a chance that this control may not handle the risk properly, either because it is not designed, not implemented or not working and that is this risk. Again, I think we can circle that that is control risk. So, inherent risk and control risk together is what? risk of material misstatement. The other part that I mentioned, if both are high, auditor has to ensure detection risk is low, one by identifying risk through risk assessment procedure and then by responding to risk. And in auditor's response, the first thing auditor will test is not to do detail, not to perform detailed testing, but to test whether this control, right, we discuss whether client is identifying non-moving stock. If client is identifying, auditor will check whether that has been done, that is called test of control. If that is not properly done, auditor will do a detailed testing. For example, you know substantive procedure can be drilled down, uh, further broken down to two substantive analytical procedure where auditor will analyze stocks, you know, monthly by category and so on and see whether there is anything unusual. In addition, auditor will do detailed testing to see whether there are non-moving items after balance sheet date has it been moved. So, through those procedures, auditor will detect. So, now the last point that I, another big point that I covered in this diagram, in addition to assertion level risk, there are some risks that relates to many assertion, therefore they are pervasive. So, write this word pervasive, they are what? Pervasive overall financial statement risk, so, they can affect many assertions, right. So, we learn those pervasive risks, for example, management integrity, management is not competent, overriding controls, right. Then another thing, last point that I explained to you this, this process of accounts preparation, risk identification, the control, 
works within internal control system and that has five components. Control environment means the importance, awareness, attitudes of the board regarding the controls. Do they consider controls as important? If you have a company where director's integrity is good and directors always participate in with management to challenge review performance, right? Uh, management philosophy, you know they are very prudent when it comes to risk taking etc. Right? There are other areas in control environment, I am this is not my detailed topic now. So, control environment is the foundation then how management identifies risk, what is their process of risk identification and then control activity. So, there are four big example I put for control activities here. If I, if you ask me what is number one? duties are segregated. For example, when it comes to sale, authorization is done by one party, invoicing is done by another party, cash collection is handled by another party, right. So, conflict in areas are segregated, no one person is attending to all critical areas to reduce, you know, the risk of fraud unless it takes place through a collusion. Then other example of control activity which I explained to you here, physical controls, information system is all about IT control, application controls, general controls and then there is a performance review. So, these are the big. Now, what I am going to do is finally, you know this is like I said make your study interesting, do not just read a very lengthy notes you know from A to Z, paint a picture. Now, see lot of concepts here. if you look at if you write this maybe you can write 50 pages, but now I will slowly tell you right when you are reading for the exam these notes I have extracted from your study text and I will quickly take them through and then we will get into a basic case study and I think uh, at this point before we even go there I want to show this slide I will continue this slide to you the like a session break if you now pause for a while and see what did I learn from this webinar right. Uh, so, this is what you should have learned right, session break. Did you learn this audit risk model right, the risk of misstatement, IR, CR, DR, did you learn assertions? Yes, you did right and then uh, so I in addition to if you miss anything from my diagram even this notes in study text, uh, especially we went through inherent risk, control risk. And uh, this diagram is very important again, what you see here in the diagram left side you see a cube, right. If you google COSO framework you will get this diagram. Now, this is the internal control system which five components. As I told you, right, there is a control environment acting like a foundation. Actually, the new diagram this must be old one, new diagram control environment is on the top does not matter you can change it the other way. Control environment then the risk assessment, control activities, information processing, monitoring you see in my diagram uh, on the whiteboard you did you looked at you looked at earlier monitoring somebody is checking whether controls are working. Finally, all of this is done on the top you can see three things to achieve company's objective. Remember without objectives there is no control. So, what are the objectives of a company? To ensure the operations are carried out properly, financial statements are right and then the laws and regulations are complied. So, this part of the the other part of the cube where you see A, B, C, D that is where if you are a group uh, you know you can apply this to all subsidiary. And also in this diagram you can see I have taken control activities out and see the example authorization. In my diagram I did not write authorization, this is one other example for control activity right. For example, all the new sales uh, say new vendors are authorized, new credit uh, evaluations are authorized by a director. Performance reviews are various reports directors are looking at, management is looking at to identify say unusual things like loan reports, stock reports and so on. Information processing is key, this is where the system ensures certain inbuilt system control that sale is right is all automatically, interest calculation is automatically generated. Then you have to ensure that the IT general control environment is good, that general environment means overall. Uh, you see the system development, nobody can change the program, access right. If ITGC is right, you can always rely on system application control like automatic calculation, right. The physical control is where you know the access to cash is restricted, things like that. So, those we discuss and then this is again this slide explained to you the audit risk, audit express and wrong opinion, inappropriate opinion. Then there are two parts, risk of misstatement 
right? Now before the audit, this is important, I, did, I didn't explain this definition to you, audit planning is all about identifying this risk prior to the audit. Financial statements are materially misstated prior to the audit, you identify that through inherent and control risk and then you control the detection risk through substantive procedures. This is what we learn and uh, so this session break we covered and now I want to, uh, before uh, I the my next topic is more go, uh, go into risk assessment in detail, right. For that purpose, I want to, uh, I want to take it through a case study, right. And then I will come back to this slide. So, let us straight away move to the case study, because finally, uh, uh, you know exam is not to remember concepts. If you cannot apply, I mentioned to you three things, knowledge, application and writing. And if you, uh, if you cannot apply uh, to a case study, this knowledge is useless. Now, this case study I have taken from study text, because this is a new syllabus, it is very important that you go through study text carefully. And I am sure institute will issue in the due course, revision kits, things like that. So, this case study you can read, you can spend uh, about a minute to read it. And I'm, I am I'm sure you would have read it already. See the heading business risk. Just take a minute uh, to look at the information, then I will connect it to our next discussion. Right, so uh, if you look at some of this information, the purpose that we go through this case study as you see the topic business risk, but I am using this case study as a base for a risk assessment and to explain to you some of the concepts in risk assessment as well. So, let us just focus on some of the information in the case study, then after that we can connect it to theory, right. So, when you go through this case study, I have highlighted uh, some of the concepts, right. Uh, now, one of the thing that I want to tell you when you go through the case study, uh, always even in the exam, first you go to the question area and see why should I read this case study, because you have to answer A, B, C. A, discuss key business risk that exist at big mall. Now, I briefly told you business risk, forget about auditors, a risk which is inherent in the business right. Anything that can affect the business objectives, they are called business risk. The best example of a business risk is today current economic crisis, which is caused by this coronavirus. It is a big business risk. But if even if you forget that in a normal case, what are the business risks? For example, some business risks take a strategic form. Company is going to lose their major customer, major supplier, right. The key employees are leaving the organization the new product fails, all these are business risks. Now, one of the very important thing of auditing is that some of this business risk connects to audit risk, right. Then there is part B of the question explaining what is meant by business risk approach to an audit. So, I will explain to you that as well, but if you even now you should know that answer, right. Now, I explain to you sometimes there are bigger business risks, audit is auditing transaction, but this company is struggling to survive, they do not have cash, they are going to close down. Whereas, as the auditor, audit team is wasting time to check in detail other receivable and accrual, where there is a doubt about continuity of the business. If you started a business risk approach to audit, the first thing that you should look at whether this company can survive for next 12 months. If you have a doubt in your audit report, you will mention that there is a risk about going concern, that is the answer, right. So, business risk approach requires auditor to look at before financial statements, various risks which are inherent in the business and how these risks could affect financial statements. 
So, now one of the question I want to ask, how do you know what are the business risks? What is auditor's approach to understand business risk that we will discuss? The last, uh, what is your strategy for the audit? Now, this word strategy in audit context, now we have in my initial explanation I have covered you know in auditing, auditor is using risk assessment procedures to identify risk. Usually audit strategy is associated with what is the approach. Now, when I use the word approach, uh, I told you two things, RAP risk assessment procedure and FAP further audit procedures. Further audit procedures is a choice between or to what extent auditor can use control testing and substantive that strategy, right. So, that when you go through the case study we will see how to draw some facts. So, let us look at some of the information from the beginning. I am sure you spend some time to read this slide. So, I have highlighted something, one is this is a uh, larger uh, company, the industry. So, I draw your attention to the industry, it is very important that some industry, they have their own business risk, right. Now, they are in the building, uh, building company and Kasun Korea who set up the company and they purchase land around major towns and build retail parks and shopping malls, right, which company manage. Now, this is very important because you have to have an understanding of the business. Now, I am stressing that word understanding because when you understand, you are going to identify risk. So, one of the thing that you should understand is the industry, right. So, I write here the word as we look at the case study, right. I am writing few words, if you want to know the risk, now this is common to life also, huh? any risk, right. If you want to know the risk, again if you relate to current uh, situation, we want to assess the risk of uh, corona infection. If you want to know more about it, understand first, right. You have to understand about the virus right, how powerful it is under what condition it can be infected and uh, how it works, right, various things you have to, you know, the time under what temperature uh, it can be killed, all of that, when better understanding enables you to identify risk. So, understanding is a key thing. So, the next logical question is what we should understand, right. I am just putting one big thing in any audit, you have to understand is the industry, right industry and uh, industry and regulatory environment, right. Now, if you are auditing a regulated company, say for example, all telco is regulated by TRC. Now, if it is a consumer product, it is regulated. There are laws and if it is a building company, you cannot put up a building in, in any way, even you have heard in Sri Lanka, you know, some of the building collapses suddenly, because certain criteria has not been followed. So, industry and regulation is one thing that need to be understood. And at the same time, I am writing point 2, because point 2 may not directly come through the case study, but it is very important if you want, because end of the day, remember you are looking as auditors about financial statements. So, therefore, one big thing if I put here number one, one other big thing to understand is what? Selection and application of, I want you to guess selection and application of what? And this is the key because this is the most critical thing based on what financial statements are produced, accounting policies right, accounting policies. Now, let us relate it to this case study. Now, for example, they have shopping malls. Some of these shopping malls are used by some other tenants, you are not occupying. So, it may be classified as investment property. If it is an investment property, what, what are the accounting model that we can follow? Is it cost model, fair value model? Now, fair value model is high risk, why? Because fair valuation is an inherent risk, why it is an inherent risk? Estimating fair value require judgment, right, subjective judgment and assumption to estimate the fair value, right. So, here F A means cost model, fair value model, the fair valuation, right. Now, how this company has applied fair value model? For example, 
Now see, you now investment property valuation I can't discuss in detail, but if you look at how investment now usually when it comes to fair valuation, there are different valuation approach. Easy one is to take the market price. Is there active market price where I can value this property? If there is no active price, I have to do a cash flow, right? I am in 2020, so I do a cash flow for next 10 years, let's say, or uh, 10 years and then I take from there to infinity. Now, in my cash flow, what is my rent income, what is my cost, I take the net cash flow and discount and I give a value, this is my building value. Now, this value in the balance sheet, right, so audit is interested to know what is the discounting rate that you use to discount the cash flow. All other companies are using say 10 percent, but your company has used 15 percent, why? Now, these are big question auditor need to understand. So, remember these two are important, right. In this case study also, we will see accounting policies, right, for the. So, I covered, uh, if you go back to reading, right, they have retail parks, shopping malls and uh, you are familiar with the client. But at the top, I want to go back to the introductory para, you are meeting managing director as the new audit partner, right. You are a new partner. So, you have to note as a partner, you are new, but Nipun, uh, new audit partner, that is Nipun Rajapaksa, N, NR, right, who has recently joined your firm, audit partner is familiarizing, right. So, but you are not new, because you are the audit senior, right. You are familiar with the client and you have taken part in the audit for three years. The other key members of the board, there is a uh, Clarice in the board and who set up the business with Kasun, she is the finance director, qualified accountant, accounting system and procedures at Big Mall always appear to be sound. Now, if you are a student reading this, what is the message to you in the audit approach? Remember in my earlier diagram, I put a big box around the risk and said that this is the internal control system. Now, this sentence suggests that internal controls are internal control seems to be sound, which means auditor can now in the part of answer you can probably say auditor may consider sub, uh, control based approach to test controls and reduce the substantive maybe, but read the full case study. Then you have had the meeting, the, this is the minutes of the meeting where the partner that is Nippon had with managing director and I have highlighted some facts. Right, some uh, one is currently majority of income is coming from property management as the building ma market is becoming saturated, right, with the interest rate uh, set to rise, uh, set to rise, interest rate is right, rising. So, they are not much into building market, but property management, right. Companies uh, keen to borrow and build in the current climate less keen, sorry, less keen. Now, as a student reading this, one of the part we know we have to answer in this question, what is business risk approach, right? You have to explain. Now, here if auditor use business risk approach, you will identify one of the main market that companies operate in is saturated. So, what is going to be the audit impact? So, again, by reading a case study, I want to do, uh, I want to write something relevant to my answers, right. Now, this is my answer plan, because there is one question about the business risk. Then I will write some points here saying that what market is saturated, build in market is saturated. So, that means I can do much business, right, saturated. So, in my answer, I note this and especially in a context of interest rate rising. Now, if this is the risk inherent in the business as the auditor, can I link this to financial statement? That approach is called business risk approach. But my question, okay, how can we link directly this to financial statement, build in market saturated? And as you read the case study, we, even we can go to next slide and see, there is another risk, then I can better explain this. What is the next incident? Bomb attack, you know, like this April, we know what happened last April, right? I think study text, uh, they have also taken this example. Uh, the bomb attack terrorist uh, in Sri Lanka, right. Because of that, because they are in sh to shopping mall and tourist 
and the partner commented that he had been given the impression that retail was down and the consumers, customers were staying away from retail centers, but he felt that some of that could be attributed to rise in interest rates and was likely to be temporary. First months of the year, all, uh, first few months are always poor in retail, right. Then now see partner is telling you know because of this attack is their impact, yeah the managing director indirectly accept that there is retail was down. See I will go back to whiteboard and write retail was down now even retail business is struggling, right even retail business is struggling and they have again mentioned this question of interest rates retail down. The reason you can say the bomb attack right and the tourist all of that. So, retail business also down and again they attribute in this to interest rates as well, right. So, uh, if you look at uh, more information there the partner is having uh, I think this is one of the important thing I missed to explain to you in my original explanation, right. Now, the best qualification auditor should have is what? Is it chartered? or ACC or any other qualification, right. Not really, the best qualification auditor should have is uh, as I said I can ask, I cannot ask interactive question expecting you to answer. Best qualification is not to be a prize winner in auditing, no any such thing. If you are a brilliant auditor, the biggest qualification is how will your mind work whether you ask in probing question. So, this is called in auditing professional skepticism. Professional skepticism means a probing mindset. Now, see this partner is again asking is skeptical, partner is not just saying yes knocking head to everything, partner is asking uh, you know uh, whether there had been a rise in empty units in your retail centers and malls, are there empty units you know now when there are empty units. Now, this is remember I told you if you look at the accounting policy in this company this may be investment property and your main income is rent income and when there are empty units you know you are not earning. So, there may be a question about your earning potential right. So, then uh, then the, the ma managing director says they yes there is a small you know managing director will not tell they are going to you know uh, bankrupt, but auditor will draw on these two, building market is saturated, interest rate is right in, retail is down and there are few uh, outlets you know which are open. Now, auditor may ask a question, can that create a going concern problem? Remember in going concern we do not use the word material misstatement, but we say there can be a material uncertainty about the ability of the company to continue as a going concern. In that case auditing standard 570 requires auditor to identify what are the events that can affect going concern and gather audit evidence and finally, audit has to decide whether this has to be reported in audit report as a going concern paragraph right. Remember going concern is a separate para, it is not uh, simply emphasis of matter that is the earlier report. In new reporting requires if there is a going concern that has to be a separate paragraph. So, now see I am telling you how to plan your answer by reading a case study. Of course, this answer is there in the book you can read, right. So, another issue, another issue that you can see in the next section is NR asks about now this partner is you know before going for a meeting he has studied about the industry. So, I draw your attention to the areas of understanding point number one industry and then because this partner knows especially regulation if this is a property development there are legislation new legislation is going to come and uh, quality standards is going to be tightened in building trade. So, Casey commented that it seems a lot of nonsense you know he is complaining to politicians and so on dissatisfaction right. NR pressed the matter uh, and uh, inquiring as to Casey's opinion on the likely effect on his business if more stringent standards were to be required in the future, right. If more stringent standards are to be required. Now, with this proposed legislation again partner is skeptical, right. If this is going to be tightened and as a building manufacturer, 
if you are not in conformity with this, you know can government can come and stop your business. Partner is raising this question, but then you know managing directly slowly say no that cannot happen, this is nonsense and so on. KC is of the belief that it would not be passed, but then partner is saying that there is a fear this is more likely to come, you know and that can have a far reaching impact. So, Casey repeated some of the previous comments about politics. Now, this is another big point that you can add to your answer. So, we have already uh, you know marked uh, two risks in relation to uh, uh, market right building and market uh, uh, retail and even interest rate. Third bigger point that you can write new legislation. Now, this is your answer. When you read this case study, we looked at two issues as business risk, right? Building market is down, retail is down. I am guiding you how to write the answer by applying theory to the case study facts. The third issue, partner is really skeptical about new legislation, right? Uh, Let us say new law for simplicity, the new law that is going to come on the building standards, right? The quality standards. Now, this quality standard, if company is not up to that standard, there is government can come and you know stop their construction, which is going to have a major impact. So, again, if company is violating this, right, and government can take some action, if it is a legal action, and uh, it can be, a, for example, contingent liability, right. Or else, if it is a more serious one like earlier one, you know, government can stop their business, right. If they have already done some constructions which is not according to this quality standards, so then there is a uh, probably a need for a disclosure. And if it is a violation of law, if there is a penalty, that penalty may be to be recorded as a provision no contingency. Now, this is how business risk can affect financial statements, right. Uh, then moving on, the last part of the case study, uh, after the meeting uh, Nipun asks about the finance director, right Clarice and discuss her plan. She confirmed that because I think somewhere there was a mentioning about the case study, she is going to retire, right and uh, then this says she confirmed she is going to retire and uh, she informed that. Uh, her plans to migrate to Australia, all of that. She asked about the possibility of your firm assisting the recruitment process. Right now, audit firm now, if she is going to go, can audit firm assist to recruit somebody, right? As she does not uh, feel that Kasun is capable to do this, to recruit a right person, and especially she is asking, can somebody from the audit firm be seconded, right, to take this role? Now, you see in this part of the question, they are connecting this to, if you look at my today's story of auditing on the bottom, I said ethics as number one. Now, imagine now the third part, I think this question, there should be a sub question on ethical issue, right. So, if you happen to explain this ethical issue, what you should write in your answer, right. So, in addition to this uh, answers about business risk, we can also uh, analyze ethical issues in this question. Right, the main ethical issue is what? If audit staff is going to be seconded, right? I am not explaining you basics, uh, basic thing about ethics in this session. But remember, if you, I'm, I hope you, I presume you have studied, right? Now this is uh, what happens if audit firm is going to work. Somebody in the audit firm, they will, you know, support this company secondment. Staff secondment means you go and work there, and you co come back to audit firm and audit. So biggest risk is self review threat, right? Out of SSFI, you know what SSFI means? SSFI means the type five types of threats that can affect the principal: self review, advocacy, self interest, familiarity, and intimidation threat. So, one risk of secondment is self review. If seconded staff is moved back to do the audit, they will re audit the work that they have done or they will reevaluate the judgment they have made. If you explain the answer, you will write that. In addition, as a part of secondment, audit team may have a very good relationship with the client staff. And if the same staff is going to be included in the audit, they may be biased towards them. That is a familiarity threat. Both can affect what? Auditors ability to make judgment, objectivity as well as independence, 
right. So, that is how you write the answer to ethics part uh, in this case study, right. So, uh, the last part Nipun is keen to re reappraise the audit strategy, right, as he feels the audit can conduct in more efficient way than in the past. Historically, audit has been substantive, that is very important to answer part C. Now, when the examiner is asking, say, in this question, propose and justify a strategy for the audit. Now, remember when they use this strategy, what should come to your mind is, is it test of control substantive? What is our strategy? And if you remember my L, do not forget theory that we learn, right. If you look at my bigger diagram earlier I did, I explained to you, you see these, uh, all of this model, this is the internal control framework and I said the foundation is the control environment. If control environment is sound, that is an indicator that audit is going to rely on internal controls and test those controls and reduce substantive procedures, right. So, that type of answer you can write, but this you can't write if this finance director is leaving. Now, if that is the case, the opposite works, which means now control environment is weak because there is no competent person to handle the accounts. As a result, the chances that you have more risk at overall financial statement level. Remember, I explained to you overall financial statement level risk is high, right. So, therefore, uh, therefore, that will affect you know some of the inherent and control risks. Uh, then auditor should do not test of control, probably some substantive procedure in some area, especially complex area. So, that is how you write answers, right. Now, see this, this is I extract from the book because I already explained to you how to write the answer, but see this slide is very important. How do you connect uh, principal risk in the business to a uh, uh, the accounts, right. When there is economic pressure, sales are not moving, it will affect inventory or going concern. This is I think general slide, not necessarily answer to previous slide. When there is economic pressure, it can affect uh, receivability of uh, sorry, recoverability of debtors and when there are custom issues, going concern, things like that. But more specifically, if you look at the answers, explanation given in your book, uh, these are some of the extracts I already explained to you. They have classified this under heading. Now, they, why they have chosen these three headings when the study text they have, when they explain this answer, they have one heading called operational, another heading called uh, again operational, I think there is another heading called yes, finance, another heading called compliance. Do you, why these three headings comes? If you remember, I explained to you this internal control framework. Right. Now, when it comes to business objectives, uh, if I go back, see these three operations, financials, compliance. So, that is how you can broadly look at uh, the business objectives and risk. So, if I come back to this answer, the, the way you have to answer that business risk and audit part, the volatile industry can create going concern issue we discuss. And specially this retail units affected by bomb threats. Right, I mean, this point is another important point. Now, because those shops are not doing well, you may not be able to recover your rent income. That is a question about recoverability of debtors, right. And then, if uh, there are properties, you have to question impairment. But remember, when a property is valued at fair value, like investment property, uh, especially if there is an impact on market value, the fact that you value at the market value, it is automatically impaired. Right. Then the loss of finance direct I explained to you that is going to create a financial statement level risk, right. Significant impact in presentation, especially in complex areas. Then interest rate can have a going concern. This new law that I explained to you can create problems, especially after balance sheet date event, right. Uh, it may require a provision or a contingent liability or a going concern, right. Now, before I end this session, Right. Let us come to some uh, end and I will I will spend some time with you uh, to uh, uh, summarize the audit risk assessment process, the areas that auditor should understand through this conceptualization, right. And then, uh, then we are in a better position to take much advanced case studies, right. Now, what you see now uh, in the slide, 
there is auditing standard this is one of the most important standard when it comes to risk if you read the name of the standard that tells you what it is right it says you can identify and assess risk through the process of understanding i already explained to you in any risk well, when it comes to risk don't think audit risk is the only risk right in your personal life you have lot of risk risk of you know not getting a promotion not passing an exam and so on when it comes to any risk analysis right perhaps if i give you a totally different example a uh, risk before a marriage right if one part is a partnership i mean marriage with a wrong person the entire life is a risk therefore before the marriage it's very important to understand about the partner family qualities all of that so this understanding is going to help you to identify measure risk and to be prepared uh, in respect of those risks so i'm going to do another important conceptualization please take a blank piece of paper in your book and write this topic risk assessment and i am going to explain to you logically how this works right so this is how i will complete my conceptualization right so there is one part here like this which i will write uh, say in rap risk assessment procedures and then that leads to this i will explain to you what it is right so this is rap and then both lead into this part you will understand this in a little while what i am going to explain to you right so i said in an audit there is rap and fap risk assessment procedures right now the key thing in risk assessment procedure is to understand it enables auditor to understand and according to auditing standard at least these five areas remain critical to understand when you understand them you are able to see the risk so you start with this understanding through this risk assessment procedures right so let's say this is 1.1 then you understand these elements and then it helps you to identify risk right so i'll cover that part and especially uh, okay this is through understanding you identify risk so what is in the middle is that to say that you identify risk the understanding helps you to identify but then i will put number 2 here right so this works like this when you understand you are able to assess risk and i will put down some of the steps when you assess risk right especially uh step number 1 right where i will assess overall risk and then assertion level risk and then you will see uh what are the risks which are likely to happen based on that analysis you will identify you will break it uh two categories of risk most dangerous risk right we call them significant risk a very important concept in auditing and uh, others we are not going to say non significant but we will instead say they are risk of material misstatement right okay now what we need to look at in an audit through some procedures auditor is able to identify risk and these are the those procedures right procedure means you know doing now if you apply this to the case study how did audit partner identify some of the risk kasun right 
he now what is given to you is the minutes of a meeting. So, one of the easiest method to identify risk is talk to them, inquiry, right? Okay, it will be very easy, life will be very easy if you can only talk to them and identify risk. Then auditor, auditors will do audit easily if you can identify all the risks by talking. So, what are the risks identified through inquiry? Retail was down, the property market was down and then there is a new legislation and there are problems in rent recovery. Now, to really see partner says there are some problem, but if you analyze their accounts, you will see lot of problem. The rent income is down the compared to budget, compared to last year, monthly. So, analytical procedure is one of the very powerful techniques where you will identify risk, analytical procedures, right. So, if you ask me what is analytical procedures, do not say ratio analysis, right, is not the answer. Analytical procedure means you evaluate financial statement by looking plausible relationship. Today you go to I think it is chapter 4 risk assessment, 4 or 5 you can look at the heading. If you go to chapter and today itself, I always say when I talk to students, there is no tomorrow. Do not ever think there is tomorrow. If you want to be successful in your life, say there is only today. So, you will do everything during the day. Every minute in the life is important because our life is short. So, therefore, now after this webinar go through in your study text, there is a case study on analytical review, right. So, analytical procedure means you are write down this word, evaluating financial statements by looking at unusual relationship, right. So, evaluating financial statement by identifying uh, by looking at you know plausible relationship. Plausible means there are reliable relationship. For example, sale has increased by 10 percent. So, usually cost of sale should also increase by 10 percent, but sale has increased by 10 percent, cost of sale has decreased by 10 percent that is really unusual. It is not a plausible relationship. Then you evaluate this, right, investigate and see whether it is misstated. So, inquiry analytical procedure in addition you can go and read their board minutes, right, inspection, right, of various documents. You can observe, right, you visit a manufacturing plant of a company and see they release wastewater to a river that itself there is audit risk, right. So, this can lead to violation of law. Now, my most important part I want you to understand is, now see this word also understand, right. If you want to know where the risk is, if you want to identify risk, you must pay your attention to all these five or six areas. Let us see how many areas. So, it is very similar to the question of marriage before getting married. You have to understand, you know, the family background, right. Now, in that case, uh, if it is a company, do not look at only the company, look at overall the industry. I already mentioned to you about the industry. So, point these points you can carefully write down with me industry, right, and regulatory environment. Now, in this case study, is it applicable? Yes, building industry, it is regulated, the quality standards. Then, selection and application of significant accounting policy. I do not write the full word here. Selection and application of significant accounting policy. Not all are significant. If you apply to the big mole case study, can you tell me what is the most important significant account in policy? And that is investment property fair valuation because why this is significant? Uh, this is a complex area, inherent risk is high. Why inherent risk is high? In the exam you will write because valuation of investment property involves subjective assumption and judgment, right. So, industry and regulatory environment, selection and application of significant accounting policies. What else you need to understand? You have to also understand the business risk. Now, we looked at this specifically, but remember before risk always risk, there is no risk if there is no objectives. You have to look at the business objectives, right. Now, they are not concentrating on more on the building now, right. Business objectives and then what are the strategies? Are there expansion strategies? And based on that, are there any business risk? So, this is the business risk approach which we have already discussed. That is number 3 and then number 4 is you will also understand companies, 
right. Uh, measurement of financial performance, right. How do they measure financial performance, right. Now, I will write one prominent example here called KPIs, right. For your simple understanding target in the exam, if you see there is a company, all the management they are really going behind sales target, that company's risk is high because there is a pressure for them to somehow achieve target. So, as an auditor, you have to see what are the important KPIs of the company because those KPIs, if there is a KPIs to reduce the inventory, right. So, they will, you know, sometimes they may change the inventory valuation policy and do something to achieve that result, right. So, industry selection of accounting policies. Now, I have put some of this in the uh, overall slide as well. You can see if you have not written down properly. So, industry and I have missed uh, one important thing which is you know now earlier when I spoke to you ideal this should have been number 2, but order does not matter you can write them down. What is NOE? What is NOE? Nature of the entity right. Now, I related this example to a marriage for example. Now, you are looking the family background right and see this family background is not healthier. Certainly, uh, similarly noted this industry is high risk. Now, nature of the entity means the person getting to the person right. As far as the person is concerned, what are the qualities and so on. So, when it comes to nature of the entity, you have to look at this company, where do they invest money? Uh, you will see they are investing money in shell companies, you know, tax havens, money laundering type of things. You see the investment sources are really doubtful. Ownership structure, right? This is mostly family owned company. Again, you may see high risk, right? And what operations they are doing? Operation means what are the activities they are doing, right? Uh, and then uh, investment ownership structure operations. Uh, things like that. Operation means in our example, big mall, what are the operations they have? They have shopping malls, they are constructing all of that. So, if the, if these operations are complex, for example, there are a lot of construction take place in the financial statement, work in progress may be important item to audit. And finally, the most important one I would say, what is IC? You have to understand internal control. Because most of these elements may be relating to inherent risk. Now, you see how we can relate to theory, but this one if you understand how good internal control you will assess the chances of you know control uh, failures. So, that is the control risk. So, the sixth element is control risk. So, if you understand all of this, you are able to assess identify risk. Now, why we have a second step call? assessment of risk. Now, you see when it comes to assessment, you might identify 100 risk, but finally, audit partner says I want to see top 5 risk. So, then there is a process of connecting this risk because end of the day, you are auditing account balances, transaction and disclosures. Therefore, the first thing that you have to look at is, uh, you have to look at ok. Now, First one we already know right now this step we have already done. So, I am not writing this as a step. Now, we have already identified risk, identified risk. Let us say we have already identified risk and let us say there are 20 risk and now we are doing some filtering to see what are the critical risks right. They are step 1 is to look at first are there pervasive risk that can affect many assertion, pervasive risk. Now, this pervasive risk we learn as overall financial statement risk. Now, in big mall example, can you tell me one of the pervasive risk? If that finance director is going to leave, that can have a pervasive impact. We do not know which balance will be affected, but as the auditor, you are supposed to relate as much as possible this risk to assertion. Therefore, your second point in risk assessment is relate risk, relate risk to what can go wrong at assertion level.
at assertion level, right. And then third risk, okay, while there are so many risks, you see the chances, for example, we identified in this shop, uh, big mall case study, going concern as a risk, but by looking at all the information, partner will say, no, this company is owned by another larger company, parent company is rich and you know, uh, they have bank support, all of that, going concern risk is not a likely risk. So, therefore, it is very important to analyze likelihood of this risk. What is the possibility that the risk is going to materialize? Once you do this analysis, then you are able to identify a lot of risk. For example, you may say inventory valuation is a risk, right? Uh, property, uh, maybe rent income is a risk. For area, there is a reason why you say risk because this company may want to record rent before the period end or whatever. But I want out of other risks for you to know what is a significant risk? This is very important from exam point of view. Out of these five, say 20 risks, say partner wants to see five out of that two risk or let us say one risk in case study, in this case study is a significant risk. So, before that, what is a significant risk? Now, let uh, me to put it put in this way. Now, if I ask you in a hospital, there are normal patients, you know they are being treated differently, but there are patients, they are taken to ICU, right, for intensive care. So, likewise, when I audit, I identify significant risk, you know auditing is interesting, whenever something is significant, always definition comes, those risks which are significant in auditor's judgment, why they are significant, because they require right, what attention? Special attention, right, special attention. Significant risk requires special attention and why, uh, how they are significant based on auditor's judgment. So, in the exam, if you happen to explain this, uh, these are the terms that they, you should use, right. So, that is significant risk. Now, this is the explanation, uh, my main explanation up to auditor's risk assessment. So, our next, uh, as next part of our study is having identified risk, what, how audit is going to respond, right. So, auditor's response to both of these, right, uh, if you look at uh, whether it is significant or not, auditor's response has to be structured in terms of what? further audit procedures, right. And there, auditor will use combination of test of control and substantive audit procedures, which may comprise of, this is substantive procedures, SP. This may comprise of substantive analytical procedures and test of details, right. So, this is auditors, if, if examine use the word strategy, this is essentially testing strategy, ideally for each account balance, each assertion, this has to be very clear. Now, I want to ask you a question. In this case study, can you tell me what is this one example, if you want to give as a significant risk? I already gave you a hint. So, most probably, again if you ask why some risk is significant, right, because one may be inherent risk is high, right, and it may be relating to one of these areas. So, I will straight away give you the answer. You can probably say investment property valuation assertion. See, we are identifying risk at assertion, valuation assertion. Why? According to standard, if they are choosing the fair value model, right? Investment property is fair value. Fair value means you value at the market price, but this market price is not readily available like share uh, market, right? You have to derive the valuation using a valuation model that contains assumption and judgment. Therefore, this is going to be a significant risk. So, why I am saying is significant risk? Remember these two words. When a risk is significant, one is, one characteristic is, is judgmental. I will show this to you in uh, study text notes. The other one is, is non-routing. It is not a regular transaction. Then it is, for example, fair value is not a day-to-day -day transaction. It requires judgment to decide the discounting rate right, uh, rent uh, increase in future, because you are looking future cash flow and value bin. 
So, therefore, if audit happens to audit significant risk like investment profit audit, auditor should be comfortable about this account in estimates, how it is made, right? How it is made, whether a company has used expert to value, whether that expert has the competency, right? What are the other internal controls, right? Whether assumptions are reasonable, all of that you will write in the answer for audit procedures. In addition to testing those controls, auditor will test. Uh, for example, auditor will evaluate, uh, undertake some of the test of details to go through valuation report, right? Uh, whether assumption used are reasonable, etc. So, I have actually taken this, not only this model, I related it to big mole case study and said that potentially investment property can be a risk and even going concern can be a significant risk, perhaps you know if that is serious in the case study. Likewise, there will be other items. So, with that explanation, uh, now what I explained to you is auditing standard, that is auditing standard number 315. In summary, what this says? By performing risk assessment procedures like inquiry, analytics, inspection, observation, auditor can understand these five areas and the sixth area of internal controls. From there, auditor should assess the risk. First, see what are the pervasive risk and then as much as possible relate risk to assertion, evaluate the likelihood and identify risk like that. Now, some of these notes when you read your study pack, it is very important that after this, I told you after this session, you can go to these notes and see uh, you understand. Now, this diagram is interesting diagram in the study pack. Now, see I am trying to explain to you here all of this, right. Now, these six things auditor should understand where are the industry regulations. So, now you can see under that regulations, various things about the industry accounting principles, etcetera. Then the nature of the entity NOE, so I said it is about the investment, financing, reporting, operations, right. Then you can also see the financial performance, this is where I gave more emphasis to KPIs, right, whether there are sales targets, things like that. Then I gave again special attention to accounting policy, in this case investment property accounting policy. Then the business risk, which can come through expansion, say this company, if they are going to go to e-commerce, e so what are the cyber security threat and so on, is there any development years in this case study, they are going to pass new laws right, are there new products and so on. This is the understanding, uh, I would say universe, which will help auditor to identify risk. And then this is in your study text, this section all I have covered. Now, you can by, you know, you can just spend one minute by looking at this, you know that you know this. You may even not read because you understand and if you listen to me properly, you will know this logically, right. Now, risk assessment means one is identify risk through understanding. Second one, whether risk relate, that is my second point in the diagram, you can uh, see pervasive risk and then relate to assertion level, then likely risk. Then this statement is very important, what is overall risk, right? Risk at financial statement level means risk that are pervasive, right? And potentially affect many assertion and all these example I discuss. If control environment is weak, especially all this example, right, management override of control, competence and this will increase the risk. And then we discuss again in your study pack, significant risk. Why it is significant? Because it requires special consideration, right. And if it is a significant risk, usually it may connect to current economic crisis, subjectivity like fair valuation, right, related party. But these two are very important that I explained to you two characteristics of a significant risk. Uh, I think it should be here. This one, non-routine, uh, see routine non-complex transactions are less likely. So, then non uh, non-routine transactions are significant and the other one is judgment, right, management judgment. So, this is an explanation about that. So, now you have a fair understanding about uh, risk and this is I, in my example I use investment property and I also talked about World Trade Center. Now, you can see World Trade Center, actually this is not a latest accounts, you can go and see Look at their accounts, one of the bigger item in the financial statement straight away in the PNL is value, fair value of investment property, right, significant amount. So, this is if you are writing in an exam, answer inherent risk is what? 
fair valuation of investment property can be misstated by because fair valuation is a complex process that involves significant assumption and judgment. Further, based on the case study, you know, if management is planning to get a loan or going for IPO, there may be a bias to miss the state. So, I highlight, I stress on that word bias. So, in the ses session 2, if I break, pause it and ask you whether what you learn, right, especially these red barn, how business risk relates to auditing and you also learn risk assessment procedure in much detail and then you also learn significant risk. So, with that, I will close this uh, sessions and remember in our next discussion we will go extensively to the next area of further audit procedures and probably we will connect it to a case study in your pilot paper and uh, kind of have a full picture about audit planning. Thank you and we will very soon meet with our next session.